Hello, good day to one and all. This is Ms. A. Krishna Sunda, Assistant Professor, Department of English, KAHM Unity Women's College, Manjeri. Today, the topic for our discussion is the poem by Dilip Chitri. So, a few lines regarding the poet Dilip Chitri. So, here is a poet. His full name is Dilip Purushottam Chitri and he was born in Baroda. He is recognized as a post-independent Indian poet. He is also well known as a painter, translator, fiction writer and even as a filmmaker. His first set of poems, collected poems, was published in the year 1960. He also became very famous by translating the bhakti poetry written by Tukaram. He has also done a number of documentaries and feature films during this post-independent period. He passed away in the year 2009. His poems are often considered as a reflection of his own life. And most of his poems are autobiographical in nature. And apart from this, his poems are pictorial. Pictorial in the sense that they evoke certain images in the mind of the reader. They create images as and when we go through his poems. So the title of the poem here is The House of My Childhood. Now, just as the title goes, we clearly understand that this is definitely about the house where the poet might have been born and this would be the house where he might have spent a major share of his earlier childhood days. So, a few features regarding the poem. The very first thing is that this is an autobiographical poem. So, autobiographical means something connected with the personal life of the poet, something related to his own experiences. Secondly, this poem is nostalgic in nature. So, nostalgia is a term which is very closely associated with memory. But again, it is very different from memory because when we talk about the term memory, all of us have got a lot of memories and we do have good memories as well as bad memories and we often dislike thinking about the bad memories that we had but on the other hand we would always like to go back to the days when we had very good memories. So this kind of a yearning or a wish to go back to those good old days which had given you good memories this is what you call as nostalgia. So this poem again is nostalgic in nature. So that is the yearning, the strong yearning of the poet to go back to those childhood days. So this is definitely about his ancestral home and he talks about his past memories within this poem. So here is the poem, the entire poem is here. So you can have one single reading of the poem if you do not possess a textbook with you. So this poem is divided into three different stanzas. So if you want to have a continuous reading, you can definitely pause the video and you can have a look at this. So let's move on to the first stanza. So this is how the poem begins. The house of my childhood stood empty. So he begins with his ancestral home. So this is just a picture to give you an idea on how an ancestral home, definitely a discarded ancestral home might appear to be. Some of you might be still lucky to be staying in your ancestral home, whereas some others would have moved on to smaller nuclear homes. Sometimes you would have moved to faraway cities, right? So all of us might not be very much connected with the ancestral home. So here the poet is very far away from this ancestral home and 
today he is back to his ancestral home and he is viewing this ancestral home and making a comparison how this home had been once and how this home is now the house of my childhood stood empty so see the very first line of the poem you can see the last word of the first line is empty empty means there is nobody inside which means this is a discarded place no one is living in this house maybe all the other members might have moved apart and sometimes even when you travel you come across these kind of houses right certain houses which are completely in a discarded situation nobody would be living there and all the plants and unwanted shrubs would be covering up the entire house so it it looks like a totally discarded and empty place so here the poet says that the house of my childhood stood empty so this is what the poet feels when he looks at this ancestral home now so it stood on a gray hill so here definitely the poet is talking about a different connotation now when we talk about the term hill the first color that will automatically uh, that comes to our mind would be green color but here it is not situated on a green hill instead it is situated on a gray hill we'll come to the details later let's move on to the next line all its furniture gone except my grandmother's grindstone and the brass figurines of her gods So just have a look at the house what is inside the house all its furniture gone so there is nothing remaining within the house everything is gone except my grandmother's grindstone and the brass figurines of her gods so there are two things which are still remaining in this ancestral home now one is my grandmother's grindstone the second thing is the brass figurines of her gods so apart from these two things the rest of the things within the ancestral home is gone gone in the sense definitely other members would have taken it up sometimes when a partition is going on people divide things especially these antique things like chairs tables cots beds etc so they take it up to their own home so maybe in such a way the furniture is completely gone but there are two things still remaining within the house one is grandmother's grindstone so grindstone definitely is a kitchen item so that's something which you can see in our old ancestral homes in kerala where food is made so these are all the old kind of uh, systems which were in prevalence but today if you look at a modern kitchen you cannot find these grindstones because these grindstones and all these old kind of equipment have been replaced by modern kind of technology now today you can see mixer grinders which can be placed on kitchen tables you have mixi lots and lots of other equipment which are a part of the kitchen set but at the same time this grindstone is something which stands as a symbolic representation of past generation so except grandmother's grindstone the remaining furniture had been taken off by the people and there is one more thing that we come to understand here it is specifically mentioned that it is the grandmother's grindstone so we get a picture about the grandmother here we understand that the grandmother loved cooking or maybe she loved making different dishes for her children and grandchildren Now the second thing which was remaining in the house is the brass figurines of her gods so that is again grandmother's gods so certain figurines in brass which were still remaining there now this line gives us an indication that the grandmother was a very religious lady so within these two lines there are two things which we have to understand the very first thing is that the grandmother loved cooking and she was a religious lady the second thing is that except the grindstone and the figurines of gods all the other things were actually taken up by the other family members which means that 
these old kind of kitchen items are left behind so we understand a distinction which is made by the poet between the past generation and the modern generation because the modern generation is not interested in using a grindstone they have better kind of equipment within their kitchen so nobody is interested in taking up this grindstone so that is left behind on the other hand the brass figurines of gods they are also left out so this is again speaking about how religious faith is declining among the modern generation people so the very first stanza is giving a very clear picture about the house and see there is a difference between the two terms house and home house is just the physical construction a house becomes a home when you have people inside when there is love when there is connection when there is association when there is happiness within a house along with people it becomes a home so here the poet is talking about this place as a house just as a physical construction and again he says that it is situated on a gray hill so now i would like to take you to another picture just have a look at these two pictures the very first one is a picture where you can see a gray hill the second one is a picture where you can see a green hill now there are lots of differences between these two pictures because in the very first picture it looks like a desert region there are no plants there are no trees there is nothing green in color but look at the second picture it is so lively it is green in color green in color means it is full of life it is fully active you can see a lot number of small plants you can see trees it is totally green in color but if you look at the first picture it is stagnant it is static because it is not filled with life so this is a basic difference between a gray hill and a green hill now imagine an ancestral home which is not looked after by anybody definitely it would look like a gray hill or sometimes like a desolated place so let's move on to the second stanza after the death of all birds bird cries still fill the mind after the city's erasure a blur still peoples the air so imagine a situation when all the birds are dead in this world even then you can experience the voice of these birds because you are so used to it that you experience this even when they are absent from your life so this is exactly the situation of the poet the poet is very far away from the ancestral home but still he could experience the memories from this home every minute even though he was away after the city's erasure as we have already discussed many of the members would have moved away from these ancestral homes to certain cities and sometimes city life has a power to erase the previous memories definitely the memories of a village life so here the poet says that even after moving into a city and even after the city being capable of removing all the good memories a blur still peoples the air which means even then the good memories of this house remained in the mind of the poet in the colorless crack that comes before morning in a place where nobody can sing words distribute their silence among intricately clustered glyphs in the colorless crack now colorless crack you can see that these terms are underlined because a figure of speech is coming here which is alliteration so what is alliteration now alliteration means the repetition of consonant sounds in succession so if you look at these words colorless crack the k sound repeatedly comes here and definitely this is what you call as alliteration so he says in the colorless crack that comes before morning which means even the crack is described as colorless 
because the poet is not feeling any kind of happiness in association with this empty house this desolate house and he says in a place where nobody can sing which means there are no people living in this ancestral house words distribute their silence among intricately clustered glyph now glyph is actually the symbol of an alphabet now you can see a picture on the right hand side now this is actually the symbolic representation of certain alphabets and that's related with japanese language so this is just for you to understand these kind of symbolic representation of alphabet is what you call as glyph so this is just a metaphorical way by which the poet is expressing the fact that there is nobody even to talk within this house so even words have no medium to move out only when human beings are there language exists now imagine language is something which never works with animals or birds because their language is totally different they do have a communicative system but their language is totally different from human communication so language as a particular system is used only by human beings and imagine a place where there are no human beings what is the use of this language words distribute their silence among intricately clustered glyphs intricately means very complicated way and clustered cluster is actually a group so a lot of complicated groups of alphabetic symbols are there and these symbols join together to make words but ultimately these words can share only silence because they need a medium to get communicated and that medium is definitely a human being so since human beings are not here definitely it is a total silence that one can see within this place now when we talk about this particular poem the house of my childhood there are two other poems that you have to remember i'm sure all of you might be familiar with the writer kamla das madhavi kuti the malayali writer now kamla das has written a very beautiful poem which is titled as my grandmother's house now this is actually a poem which you can see at the back of your text so please make sure that you read through this poem because this poem again shares a lot of themes in connection with dilip chitre's poem again there is another writer an english writer the great essayist whose name is charles lamb now charles lamb is very famous for his essays it is known as essays of elia that is how he wrote now if you check google you will get more details now lamb again has written a small essay which is titled as dream children a reverie now even in this essay lamb talks about his ancestral home and his grandmother so whenever you talk about your ancestral home one great presence that you cannot ignore is definitely your grandmother's face because we all have gone through that and we all have experienced that so kamla das grandmother comes in her poem similarly charles lamb again talks about his grandmother whose name is mrs field so in all these works you can see this recurring pattern of ancestral house and grandmothers coming in so it is really nice if you can go through these works because they share the same kind of idea okay so moving on the last stanza my grandmother's voice she was on a bare branch I toddle around the empty house. Spring and summer are both gone, leaving an elderly infant to explore the rooms of age. So this is the last stanza, and in the last stanza, he brings the image of his grandmother once again. My grandmother's voice shivers on a bare branch. So see the image. bare branch so it is a branch which has got no leaves or flowers my grandmother's voice shivers on a bare branch so the poet is actually getting an experience of his grandmother he feels that his grandmother is still within that house i toddle around the empty house 
to toddle. You can see a picture there with a small child. You can see a happy child who is toddling. You might have heard about the term toddler. Now, toddler is a child who is actually more than two but less than three. So, to toddle means to take unsteady kind of steps uh, or steps which are not very much steady in nature because they are not really able to walk but it is actually the way in which they are trying to walk. I toddle around the empty house. Now Dilip Chitre, the poet here, is actually an adult now. So can he toddle? In, in reality, he cannot toddle, but he feels that he is toddling around the empty house. Maybe he is going back to his previous experience as a child. Maybe he once again wants to go through that experience as a child and he wants to toddle around the empty house. Spring and summer are both gone. Now, if you look at poems and writings and literature, spring and summer are two seasons which are basically considered as positive seasons because spring is a season where you can see a lot of flowers blooming up and summer is a season which is always considered as positive with its sunlight. So these are the two seasons which are considered as positive seasons but unfortunately another thing is that these four are not actually Indian seasons. Now right from our school days we learn that there are four seasons like we learn about spring, summer, autumn and winter but unfortunately these are not Indian seasons. So we are just repeatedly going through the western seasons because we don't have a perfect spring here and we don't have a perfect winter here. So this is not actually our seasons but unfortunately this is how seasons are classified. Even that is exactly the way in which we continue with our education system. So spring, summer, winter, autumn these are seasons which often come in literature pieces. So here again the poet says that spring and summer are both gone which means the happy days are gone because the happy days are definitely your childhood days right because that is a period when you need not be very responsible you don't have any kind of commitments towards anybody so it's a free life you just enjoy your life. And he finally concludes by saying that leaving an elderly infant to explore the rooms of age. So leaving an elderly infant. Now look at that term, elderly infant. Elderly means someone who is very old and infant is a child. So how can these two words come together? Because they are just the opposites. Now here comes another figure of speech which is known as oxymoron. So oxymoron means where two contradictory terms are coming together. Another example would be terrible beauty. Again, living dead I see hot. In all these cases, you can see two different contradictory terms are coming together. So here again, the poet uses oxymoron and he says, leaving an elderly infant. So at the same time, he is a grown-up person. But again, his mind is just like that of an infant going back to his previous memories. To explore the rooms of age. So now he is talking about the passage of time because he was grow he actually grew up in this ancestral home as a small child. Now he is a grown-up individual, an adult, and after many long years he is coming back to his ancestral home and he finds that everything has changed. So once again he says that he would like to explore the rooms of age which means the passage of time by which he really would like to go back to his childhood days. So this definitely is a poem which is filled with a lot of nostalgic elements. So now let's move on to the question answer session. So what is the figure of speech in the expression colorless cracks? So we have already discussed that. So the answer is alliteration and alliteration is a repetition of consonant sounds in successive group of words. So colorless cracks, alliteration comes as a figure of speech here. Question number two, identify the figure of speech in the expression elderly infant. So that's again something which we had already discussed. So the figure of speech here is oxymoron. And oxymoron, the definition is where two contradictory terms come together. So some examples can be terrible beauty, living dead. 
seriously funny found missing so see if someone is really serious how can he or she be funny or if someone is really funny how can they be serious again found missing if something is found how can it go missing or if something is missing how can it be found so these kind of words contradictory words which are coming together you call it as oxymoron So moving on to the next question, question number three, identify the images in the poem that suggest desolation. So these are some of the terms suggesting desolation, empty house, grey hill, colourless cracks, bare branch, etc. Moving to the next part, what are the exceptions of furniture that the speaker talks about? Except the grandmother's grindstone and the brass figurines of her gods, the remaining furniture had been taken away by the family members. Words distribute their silence among intricately clustered glyphs. Explain. The lines describe the emptiness lurking within the house. Words share their silence with alphabet symbols. This denotes a face without any communication since there are no human beings left in the old desolate home. What is the significance of the color grey in the expression grey hill? The grey color is a contradiction to the ordinary hills we see which are always green in color. Since green signifies life and vitality, the color grey here stands for emptiness and desolateness. Why do you think are the cracks colorless? The term colorless again brings in the image of dullness and emptiness. Since no one resides at the home, even the cracks are turning to be colorless for the poet. Why does the poet invoke the seasons of spring and summer? Both spring and summer represent the best days of a year and hence these months remain as a symbolic representation of the good old days of the poet. Now he feels that these seasons are long gone and his childhood house is completely in a desolated condition. Discuss the significance of the word total in the poem. The term total means to walk with unsteady steps similar to that of a child. The word implies the loss of the poet's childhood days. The word signifies how the poet yearns to go back to his childhood days once again. So the next one is autobiographical elements in the poem. So I'm just relating to the major points which you can develop into two or three sentences which will give you uh, enough length for an answer. So definitely autobiographical means it is related to one's personal life or one's personal experience. And this poem is definitely about the poet's ancestral home. So his experiences of childhood and the last point is his nostalgia in connection with this house. So these are some of the major points that you have to relate to when you talk about the autobiographical elements. So just expand all these points into two or three sentences because we have discussed all these themes in the previous question and answer session. How do the images of grindstone and brass figurines conjure up the world of the grandmother? So this actually talks about the personality of the grandmother. So we come to understand how much she loved cooking and how much she loved serving and creating dishes for her children and grandchildren. This also talks about how religious she had been and finally this is a stark contrast to the ways of the new generation. Okay, so I think this is a repetition. The slide has come once again, so just we'll quickly move off. 
Okay, here comes the next question. How does the poet look at the passage of time? So now he is actually comparing the previous house he had been and the present condition of the house. So the house which is empty now. And now he has become an adult. So it is actually the transition from innocence to experience as in the case of the poet. At the same time, a beautiful house, a beautiful ancestral home is completely in a desolate condition right now. So he is actually comparing it with his own experience, his growth from a child as a child towards the experienced world of an adult. Now discuss the theme of the poem. So the main theme here is definitely nostalgia. Passage of time comes. Childhood is there. Emptiness. And the contrast between old and new generation. So you need to expand all these points which will definitely give you a lengthy answer. What picture of the grandmother do you get from the poem? So she is someone who loved cooking. She was traditional. She was religious too. Okay, so with this we come to the end of this session. So thank you for your patient listening. If you're having any kind of clarifications or doubts, please do not hesitate to connect with me. So here is my email ID. So thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you all. Thank you once again.